Here's the situation. Our society is attempting to push upon us a vaccine of a known unknown virus. There have been some rumors about the vaccine being the mark of the beast. This go around is only a precursor to what the mark of the beast is truly going to be. I would like to share something with you out of the book of Revelation chapter 13. Hopefully that will provide a little more context as how to discern between the COVID-19 jab and what Satan has in store for his mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13. Let's look at the contents before we get into the scripture. The contents of chapter 15 reads as follows. And I am reading this out of the Bible summarized handbook written by Keith L. Brooks, uh, printed in the year 1976. The beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth. Yes, there will be two beasts. The conclusion of this chapter, chapter 13, in Revelation is this. In the midst of the tribulation period, there shall rise up two great world leaders. One, a political leader inspired by Satan himself. The other, a religious leader to deceive the people with strong delusions and either led them or forced them to worship the Antichrist as the long expected world ruler. These two guys will cahoot together. They will convince the world that this Antichrist is in fact the one that we have been waiting for, for our redemption. These two satanic deceivers shall prevail upon all except those who risk all to boldly acknowledge their faith in the Lamb of God, who is Jesus, slain from the foundation of the world. So you say, how is Christ seen? In chapter 13, we read as follows in verse 8. The salvation in the great tribulation is still based on the blood of Jesus Christ. Those who are then saved, however, must boldly confess the faith before a world of hostile witnesses, which will mean nothing short of death in this time, except to those few sealed in Israel. These are the days of grace. They may be the start of the tribulation, but these are in fact the days of grace. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 through 18 he that has an ear let him hear revelation 13 verse 11 then i saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon 
and something spoke as a dragon. He spoke as if he were a great serpent. It was sharp, it was dark, and it was powerful. Chapter 13, verse 12. He, that's the beast, exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. So we have to look at that scripture the first dragon was healed. The second dragon comes and basically makes everyone on the earth worship, that verse 12 says, the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. Revelation 13, verse 13 says, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of man. The making of fire is synonymous with power. We read throughout the Bible that God used fire for his word. Jeremiah says, his word is like a fire shot up in my bone. There are different prophets that said, send down fire from heaven. Whenever you have fire, that fire consumes. And this chapter 13, verse 13, is the beasts trying to mimic the Holy Ghost power of fire from heaven. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who had the wound of a sword and has come to life. Revelation 13, verse 15. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Revelation 13, verse 16. And he caused all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Revelation 13 verse 17 and he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 13 Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. This beast was given power to basically kill anyone and everyone that was not worshiping the image to make him look like he is one of God's chosen by mimicking what has happened with Jesus being brought from the dead. But it doesn't stop there. So here's where we get where the meat and potatoes comes into play versus what the mark of the beast is. This COVID jab is being used 
as a precursor to implement the mark of the beast. But there's a big difference. This COVID jab, number one, is known as a supposed fix all or fix some of a virus. And so the sole center of this COVID vaccine is to supposedly inoculate from the virus. But we who are spiritual, we know without a shadow of a doubt that this is also an exercise to see, or let me rephrase that, because I don't know that without pontificating. But we know, we who are spiritual know that this can possibly be a particular world order or a particular test run to see how quickly the mark of the beast can be implemented. That's just my opinion. I don't give opinions much, but this is really looking like something that we need to look up and pray and thank God that it's coming. Because the more these things happen, the closer we're going to get to being with the Lord. Mm, glory, hallelujah. So I say to you this, COVID-19 inoculation, the jab, It's between you and your doctor and whether or not you and your family feel that is safe. The mark of the beast. In the end, it's going to be between you, your faith in Jesus Christ, the world premier of Antichrist and what Satan wants. He divides, he deceives, and he destroys. You can get caught up on this COVID thing, but don't get caught up in your salvation. Don't take my word for it. Read the scripture for yourself. Romans chapter 10 verses 5 through 13 reads as follows. For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on law shall live by that righteousness. But the righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him, which is Jesus, from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he that's the person confesses resulting in salvation for the scripture says whosoever believes in him will not be disappointed this isn't 
the mark of the beast, but it is a precursor for it. Pray, prep, watch, and rejoice. May God bless you. May God smile upon you. May he give you the discernment that you need to get through this next wave of COVID. He that has an ear, let him hear.